Okay. Where do you think this uh, inner fight came from, this inner drive that come from your childhood? You mentioned uh, growing up poor, you know, did you grow up with a rough childhood or where do you think some of this came from? Just like every kid, we all look back when we're, when we're younger, right? Every kid has a dream of wanting to be a, a policeman, a firefighter, a pro athlete. You know, we've all been there. For me as a little kid, I never knew what it felt like to have anything nice. I never knew what it felt like to have home cooked meals every night. I never knew what it was like to even have brand new clothes. That wasn't my reality. I grew up extremely poor. And even though, you know, my siblings may not like to admit it, it's true. And uh, my entire life, just always growing up as a kid and being extremely poor and turning on the TV back then, it was MTV music videos and everything yep. like that, right? BET. Every time I turn on the TV, man, I just always wanted a better life for myself. And I felt like if these people can do it, why can't I? And I was thinking like that as a little kid. Um, you know, I had my, my times where, you know, running the streets, I don't always make the best decisions. I, growing up, it was a big learning experience for me. Grow up here in Sacramento? Yeah, born and raised in Sacramento. <laughs> and uh, I think for me, I made probably a lot more mistakes throughout my life and in my childhood than most people probably would have because I never had any parents around, really. Um, so for me, I was going through life as a young kid, having to take on the world and learn a lot of things all on my own. You know, I have my older sister, Kelly, love her to death seeing that you know we butt heads the most because we're so similar um but she is the oldest sibling that i have my oldest sister and uh you know she helped raise me in a lot of ways but yeah just going back man like i always just wanted to have a better life for myself and uh very first time seeing mike tyson fight um, was on a black box. I've said it a few times in interviews, but <laughs> black box, if you guys don't remember back in like the 90s, it was a way to steal free premium channels. <laughs> of course. So right? I've said it in the past, like uh, nothing brought my family together more to, I won't say her name, but my aunt's house that right. had a black box. Right. <laughs> that brought us together more than like Thanksgiving and Christmas. It was like, oh shit, Tyson's fighting. We got to go to... No, yeah, this was back in the 90s. It was like the modern day fire stick we got now, oh, broken, yeah. jailbroken. You was getting everything free. So, you know, 10 years old, very first time seeing Mike Tyson fight Holyfield. I oh, just saw God. these guys, and I, I was instantly hooked at that point. 10 years old, I, I was already getting in fights and suspended all the time because I never had nice clothes to wear to school. I was getting picked on all the time. I was always hungry at school. I didn't always eat the best meals when I was at home. So I always was, in a sense, having to defend myself at school. But when I was 10 years old and the very first time I saw Mike Tyson in the Vander Holyfield fight, oh, dude, I was instantly hooked in words I can't even explain. And I just knew at that moment that was everything I wanted to do in my life. So, you know, you fast forward now. My life has been like a movie, man. You know, I've served my country. I'm, I'm proud to say that. You know, that was something I always wanted to do as well. Two things I always wanted to do is be a pro athlete and to serve my country. And, you know, I think after this last fight, even though I'm far from being done and the best is yet to come, I, I think you'd definitely say that I've achieved my, my childhood dream without a doubt. You seem to have a very, like, even personality. <laughs> um <clears throat> Did boxing teach you that? Like when you were younger, did you just get mad about stuff and fight people? Or like, cause it doesn't seem like you would be that way now unless somebody really did something crazy. What do you mean about it? Even personality? It just seemed like you uh, are pretty mellow. It seemed like you're pretty like relaxed. I'm sure, like, yeah, again, if someone totally disrespected you or did something wild, <laughs> then you'd have to take care of business but right. you don't see you don't seem charged up in that way were you that way when you were young yeah when i was younger again a lot of things that come through our growth is experiences right so you know growing up not ever going through things the right way i had to kind of teach and, and learn myself so when i was younger certain situations would happen or people would do something to piss me off and I would get all fired up. I would be that kid. I'm an Aries, man. I'd be that guy. I'd wear my emotions on my sleeve. After going through so many different life-changing situations or little minor situations, as you mentioned, throughout life in my childhood, I had to train and teach myself like, at the end of the day, when you got that kid that just keeps on poking you, poking you, poking you, and you get pissed off, you are now allowing them to win they're showing that they defeated you mm -hmm. 
and at the end of the day it's a game of chess not checkers like i'm if i'm gonna get mad i'm gonna get mad inside my head i'm not gonna let you know that you had the upper hand and pissed me off so to answer your question it's just throughout my life i had to really train and teach myself how to not get so uh overreactive about certain situations just channel everything see everything but don't always let people know what you're thinking you know and uh, it was definitely something that took a lot of years of training. You know, I, I'm one of those people. I love to be the life of the party. I love to see people laugh. I love to see people succeed as long as they're not in the ring with me. Um, <laughs> and I just love to see people be happy. You know, we're in a, 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 a age right now and in life. So many people wake up every single day doing shit that they can't stand doing. Mm. Right. People, it's a are going out here chasing a paycheck because it pays well but they're unhappy i never wanted that to be me so like this demeanor that you guys are seeing is just me training myself over the years just because i choose to be happy instead of miserable you know and i heard uh, a saying years ago from a mentor of mine there's two things that we're always in control of in life the way that we start our day and the way that we finish our day. All the bullshit that happens in between is completely out of our control. The only thing that we can dictate is how we choose to handle it. But at the end of the day, it's up to us to decide how do we want to start and finish our day? Do we want to start our day bitter? Do we want to end our day bitter? Or do we want to start our day being motivational, inspirational, having positivity and going to bed the same way? I'm just one of those people. I don't like to go to bed with a lot of envy or a lot of hate on my mind. I'm not one of those people. I feel that everything in life is a learning lesson, whether it's a negative or a positive. You can turn everything into a positive that everything in life is either one of two things that teach you something about yourself or to teach you something about other people. And again, majority of what we go through in life is all about how we respond to it. So my response to most people is just to channel it in myself, laugh about it, and uh, just turn it into positivity, man.